All right, what's up, y'all? It's like a fan here. Welcome back to the detail series. We got part two. Joe knows on the scene for this one. If you want to go back and check out number one, we did Ticino. It doesn't matter what order you watch them in, though. So you could watch this one, then go watch the Ticino vid. Real quick, I want to give a quick shout out to Joe. Con early congrats on hitting 100 mil views. That is a huge accomplishment, and he's going to get there, obviously. And I just wanted to let you know where you can find him at. So this is his Twitter, his Instagram. You got his YouTube right here. Go ahead and sub, turn on the noties, all that good stuff. And just to give you a quick little idea of what videos he makes, a lot of his subs allow him to hop on his on their accounts and just, you know, test out little things like the John Morant, Carmelo, stuff like that. Uh, another Carmelo build. He has his own LeBron build, and that's mostly what we're detailing in today's video and how he uses that. So anyway, I hope you all enjoy the video. Real quick, as I'm talking right now, we're going to plug a couple of the little uh, screenshots and stuff. I wanted to show you guys, first of all, me and him go way back. This is I'm talking all the way back to like early 2017, and we both were just starting our channels. We both had like literally 5,000 subs, and I had 10,000 subs, and we were just working together, made a couple videos together. I was like the second person he ever followed on Twitter, and I just wanted to show you guys that stuff, but obviously you saw his win percentage too. Other than that, I hope you all enjoy the video, and let's get into the film room. All right, so... I recall a lot of you guys saying you wanted, because I was talking about how Kobe is very stern in these videos and, you know, very straightforward with all this stuff. And I was like, nah, I'm going to do this my own way and be kind of joking about it. But I'm going to kind of do a more jump cut type feel, give a true breakdown to the stuff that Joe does. Because as a slasher, there's a lot of things that not only I resonate with, but I want to kind of explain to you guys how you could play like him and myself as well. Clip number one. These are some moves that I'd really like to utilize, but I don't have the ball control to do. When you can size the defense up one way, and then a well time behind the back gets into the other side of the defense, you're going to see he gets to the other side of both defenders. Beautiful timing on the behind the back here. And obviously, like I said, back in 2K17, this is the stuff I love to do. You can hit that behind the back, warp to the other side of both the defenders, because he comes off and helps as well. And then he gets literally a contact dunk on both of them. But anyway, like I said, you can see he's sizing the defense up leading him to the drive on the left and then hits that behind the back gets a nice gets a nice take right there so anyway moving on to clip number two this right here was super cold i love i love seeing when you can put people on a string and control their movement people people believe everything to slashing means no skill there's super small intricate little things right here that like really take a lot of thought and detail so you're gonna see he's coming up the court hits this behind the back to get to one side then does a between the legs as well to warp him right back. So really that behind the back was just to size him up. I'm no, I know there's a lot of combo moves that you can do, and I'm sure that was his thought going into it. And then nice hop step as well to just get to the other, get to the other side of him, and he already jumped to go for the block as well. Okay, so right here, this is a small note. Not, not a big deal, but really good defensive IQ right here that I just wanted to give him props on. So obviously you can see... The guard, everything dealing with this defense on the top is leading him to the corner drive. And Joe knows that as well. <laughs> no pun intended. But um, Joe knows that they are going to, the guard's going to take this drive. At least he has to. Like, that's literally what he's being given. So, nice bump steal right here. He helps off the corner. Good steal timing. Gets his, gets his man in transition just like that. And then the very next play, it was a beautiful triple threat. Just jab step. And I love to see this triple threat stuff. If there's one thing I've learned from him... In, in all the years past, it's definitely to use this triple threat quite a bit. I never really used to use this quite a bit, but then he has just been, and not that it's like hard to use triple threat, but he's been a master of this for years now. He has always been a big fan of the triple threat, and obviously, you know, it's a very realistic feel to the basketball game as well. But anyway, then the very next play again, I, I was wondering more so, and maybe he'll watch this and uh, kind of explain, I was wondering if he meant to force this switch right here so the thing that a lot of people don't do in pro-am or even just or even just park or threes in the stage for that matter a lot of times they don't utilize the pick and poppers on their team to force these switches like they could now i'm wondering if this player right here was a great defender and this one is a weak defender and i feel like as far as being a slasher i'm more comfortable isoing from this wing anyway and I wonder if he just meant to get this weak defender on him. It also creates a lot of confusion as well, just to deal with these, like, you know, switches and mismatches happening. But anyway, easy take to the hoop again. A lot of this, a lot of stuff that he does is, like, really underrated in a mental aspect. And I just want you guys to understand that. There's a lot of stuff that he probably thinks of that it looks like is kind of just happening on the fly in a bunch of BS that is to deal with slashing. But 
I promise you, there's way more that goes into it. So, anyway, right here, this was a nasty hezzy combined with the behind the back right here. So, you see, he hits, he puts the brakes on him. Boom, hits that behind the back. Like I said, there's a lot of stuff with the slashing that it's just to break the defender down with one size up move. Like right here, boom, hits the hezzy, hits that behind the back. Now, this is something that I lived off of in 2K17. It was literally just time that behind the back as soon as they get near you. And I'm sure that's what he's thinking at this very moment as well. Gets past the defense. Wing drops and still tries to help, but he just beats him to the spot. Great dunk animation as well. Corner didn't help off enough. Easy take. Simple as that. All right, so check this out now. So as you can see down here by the clock, there is 6.2 on the clock right now. His team is also winning, but regardless, anyway, 6.2 on the clock. He's shredding up the court, getting a running start to like start moving forward. Again, with the with the sizing them up with the behind the back, you can see right here, he hits that as well. Busts that guy. This guy goes for a charge, dunks over two people. Like Now, I understand it's probably not the best take. He wouldn't take this if it weren't for the clock. That's the key. But he made something out of nothing really well with this play. I wanted to show some big props on this one as well. Great maneuvering and just, you know, making adjustments on the fly, making something out of nothing. Anyway, this right here, I'm actually a big fan of this move right here if you're going to ISO with the five out with a slasher. So you're going to see he hits this little snap quite often. So boom, he hits that. You're going to you're going to see he utilizes this move quite a bit um moving forward in the video as well, but anyway, what it's more for is if he, he kind of stops his movement and goes the other way. This is big time because sometimes you're going to run into that wing and it's going to get real tight and you got to just go back the other way and you're going to see he can kind of create his own opening with this as well and he gets the the easy drive off that, waits for the waits for the guard to jump. It, at the end of the day too, you got to know your mismatches. Those guards probably don't know, it, you know, they're not going to be able to make a big enough impact. Anyway, moving along. This right here, I was really impressed with how he gets through the help defense like he does. This was a great hop. He, he does this quite often as well. Where And you see, they run a nice little pick and pop. Uh, it gets him into this big like window of defenders right here. And three guys attack him. Now, could he have came off this on the drive looking to dot the wing? Possibly. But it's, hard to, it's really hard to anticipate that wing defense. And you're going to see, obviously there are other times that he does that as well. But... He splits right through this triple team with a perfect hop step right here. Gets past the defender on the backside right there. The corners drop. They they were just the corners drop to try to like you know scare him out of taking it in the drive. But then they all pop back out because yo you're gonna see later in this video his passing threat is is a true thing as well. Okay, so for those of you who don't know, my man when I first met him, like I said back in 2K17, post scoring was actually his thing. Now in this video, he tailored his finisher, his LeBron build, and his finishing and playmaking badges to be post post scoring related, and use his LeBron build while doing so. This clip right here just reminds me of what he used to do back then. So you're gonna see he hits that little fake spin, boom, hits the post spin, gets him off. I don't, yo, this right, this move right here is the finesse of all finesse with the post scoring. I wish I knew how to like kind of do this as well. Look at how. He just like shifts the ball hand as he does. And then boom, hits the hook off of that, greens that as well. And you're going to see, like I said, this video, this portion of the video right here is his post scoring with this build. Now I know he doesn't do it often, but I wanted to show him props to this as well. So again, you're going to see, hits him with the post spin, gets him real in. It, when, that, when you hit that post spin on him, they're going to try to body up real tight. And then obviously you can use that to your advantage by just going for anything that does with outside scoring. But you can utilize the other way as well, where you can fake the outside move, then go in. Right here, you can see the, the dude's just playing back too far. He gets the hook off of this as well. It's just, yo, this build is actually really tailored to his play style as well. And I, I give him big props to that because I know this is something that he, when he hits legend with this build, bro, he can really utilize every little ounce of aspect of this build that he would like to use. Look at that. I mean, it, you don't see any post score able to, able to do this because nobody's got the mobility and driving dunk to do that either. It's just a real good, it's a real good combo to his play style, like I said. And I, I just had to, you know, kind of say... I think this build fits him really well and the way that he uses it. But like I said, when he hits legend, that's going to be big time for him as well. That The versatility you could use with this build is crazy. Now, this is what I was saying as well. When you fake those outside moves, or when you fake the inside moves, it sets up your outside. When you fake the outside move, it sets up your inside. You can see he he killed him with that you know drive off the post moves initially. So now when he hits that as well, this is where both defenders are thinking drive. Now, this guy on the back, look at him just get, go just blazing into oblivion and he just gives up the post hook because he was, again, he was thinking it was drive. So now he gets the nice post hook right there. Doesn't green it, but again, 
it's just a nice aspect of that okay so now as you can see by the intro right here they got a glass cleaner as the big man ss2 and i just wanted to kind of show show how it's really interesting obviously with a build like this you're only gonna usually you know take it into the post on smaller defenders not usually try to you know baby anybody that's bigger than you because that's just it doesn't really make sense to do but obviously he was doing this for a video for video purpose now i just thought it was interesting glass cleaner still can't hold him with this stuff now again when you open up with those outside moves it obviously creates things like this now post spin technician on hall of fame is going to work how it's going to work as long as you make them play up on you tight the key is he hit him with that post that post fade on the right side so now he made him play real tight on that post spin breaks his ankles with that gets the dunk over him that's it's just a really good uh display of that now obviously if it demands two defenders that's going to be tough to deal with okay so then this play right here so you're going to see he works him with kind of he gets inside right but just in general this shot right here is not gonna be a good one to take you see he kind of baits him with this a little bit and obviously he could have hit corner right here but then you're gonna see this guy returns to the corner at this moment as well and would have had the passing lane so the up and under was actually a beautiful thing to do right here perfect timing on that and like I said it just the way that he plays just demands a double team and obviously with the hall of fame passing ability it's just gonna be it's gonna be tough to deal with simple as that so and anyway, we're wrapping up the post scoring aspect right here. I just kind of wanted to detail a couple of those last little bits of that. But yo, it, and again, look at this drive off of the post stuff. So you're going to see, boom, hits that little hezzy. And that is tough to deal with, bro. If if he can actually hit his post fades like, he, like I know he can, this build actually has a really good post fade rating as well. And I mean, like I said, when he hits legend, this is going to be so tough to deal with as far as a, like, you know, so many badges that he could correlate to so many different play styles and have them all at once but anyway moving along we're gonna get right into this 5v5 park gameplay this is against chalk first legend in case you guys didn't know this right here i, I like it i mean it's it's not too complicated it's just a simple hezzy right here you see he just stuns his defender with it it's a simple hezzy but the way that joe works i want to explain this he's not flashy with it he's not complicated with it he scores to he's efficient with this stuff so if it takes him one move to get past his defender, that's all he's going to do. It's simple as that. So, again, simple hezzy. Honestly, I have major respect to the play style. He isn't over flashy. He lives off moves like this. Very minimal time and energy spent and super efficient moves. So, anyway, and like I said earlier in the video, you're going to watch this wing help where, you know, uh, so Makery on the right right here. He helps off quite a bit. So, you're going to see these moves that he does right here as the shot clock's running low as well. He's just going to kind of note to that. But... As the shot clock's running low, look at that move he does. It's it's always that cancel, right? But there's nothing you can do about it. The the left wing chalk is helping quite a bit, and he just wants to get away from that. Boom, hits the rhythm dribble, takes it to the right. Now, again, he lives for this right here in the 5v5 moments, where you're trying to fit through these gaps on the wings. Now, obviously, you need great shooters on the wing, which is major key as well. So just to have Hall of Fame range extender and good shooting ratings is always going to be a big thing as far as what he plays with. If he doesn't already in 5v5 situations, I would maybe suggest for him to play with a pure sharp. I feel like that actually helped quite a bit. You can know which side on the wing you you usually will be able to kind of get open off of the for the most part as well. But anyway, okay, so into this basketball gods gameplay right here. The first clip right here, I know this isn't the most impressive pass, but... You're going to see, and he was noting to this in the commentary as well. Look at left corner. He's he's helping off so much. Right here, he, he, you know, he's just, he's baiting, basically. And one thing I'll say about Joe, he really always is on top of this, where, you know, if he if he sees people are, like, helping off corner, look at him. He already pulled up the icons. He already knew he was swinging this pass over here. And like I said, it's not the most impressive thing. A lot of people do that. But that's just a huge thing with his play style that I always take note of in, in all previous years. And again, I mean, not the most overly ridiculous pass, but just re reading the defense, simple as that. Big man was probably expecting to play low and just let Joe shoot. And he, the big was probably thinking the guard was going to go guard corner, but he just left him reeling. Again, it says, it's as simple as read and react. That's how he plays. He doesn't try to dissect and run plays or anything. It, but also, speaking of running plays, so... On the next one after this, I I kind of will break that down. But anyway, for this for this play specifically, I wanted to talk about maybe something that he could do differently, or just show maybe what I would do in this situation. Now I don't know because he has a, a bit lower rebounding than I do, actually quite a bit, and has now like one defensive badge. Now again, this may change when he hits legend as well, where it would massively impact to be able to have more defensive badges. But 
situation like this, I live for if I am forced to guard corner for whatever reason that may be. It's it's rare that I ever get put in this situation, but when guarding corner and the guard shoots through a double team and the big man is up top. Now, this is one of the downsides to having a slow big. I just want to kind of explain that. If you have a faster player in this situation, boom, he's closer to the basket. It's really tough to get to that box out from this spot as well. But super slow big, 7-3. He might have worm on though, so it may be tough for Joe to secure this box out in the right spot anyway. But I just wanted to detail maybe something he could do differently. Now this is basketball gods as well. Obviously you're very keen to watching the threes as well. So maybe he was just looking to give up a free board as well. But if he could have maybe tried to secure that box out, that probably could have been a better rebound. But that's kind of like blitzing in football where if you go for that and you don't get the rebound, then this is wide open corner three. What he did right here, he covered as much ground as possible, still got back out to the corner, and at the end of the day, they gave up a two instead of a three. So regardless, but anyway, speaking of not running plays, this right here, so you're gonna see, they, had, they hadn't they had ran anything, you know, for off ball movement or anything through the whole game. And now they got rim takeover on this guy. So I, I know he's probably thinking that too. And he's probably and not trying to dodge the rim protector but more so this is the smart thing to do by not going straight at him so you're gonna see they're just confusing them as well now normal aspect you know if joe didn't have a slash takeover the rim would probably switch or same if the rim didn't have his takeover he would probably switch onto him he would probably switch onto him but the confusion on that because obviously rim takeover is going to attract to slash takeover they want to stop that and this guy wasn't on the backside prepared so anyway you see they get speaking of not running plays they get a green off the off the off ball movement that's 14 to 19 and that is basically as good as game so anyway like i said before if you haven't already subbed to joe go do so i really recommend he's got great content really entertaining and just like he has some comedy in his videos as well it's really actually a fun kind of feel to his channel but anyway like i said feel free to go do so if you haven't already this dude's been a big brother and just a good role model to me in this youtube game for i can't even count like literally three to four years to this point so it's just it's dope that he was cool with this as well and hopefully sometime me and him can hop on the hop on the sticks and just play some twos or something together again for a collab vid let him know that you want to see that as well i know me and him have talked about it quite a bit and at the end of the day we we are both cool with it but realistically we don't have builds that mesh well with each other obviously we're both slashers and that's why we're both put in the same category with this youtube stuff as well but anyway i hope you all enjoyed like I said, feel free to drop a like, sub if you're new, turn on the noties, all that good stuff. Go check out the Ticino vid if you haven't already. And then, like I said, I think the next one I'm just actually going to do on myself. If you have other YouTubers that you want me to like, kind of do this detail series on, leave in their comments that you want to see them on my channel. Simple as that. It's going to be a much easier to reach, like, you know, clouded, good top people in the communities. People like Poor Boy Sin and, you know, Steezo and G-Man, people like that. You're going to have to let them know for me because I I can't really reach them in, my, in the DMs too much. But anyway, I hope you all enjoyed the video. Like I said, if you did, feel free to drop a like, sub if you're new, turn on the noties. And if you made it to the end of the vid, put Joe in the comments to show that you made it all the way through and just want to show your support. But anyway, other than that, hope you all enjoyed. Take it easy, man. Peace.